We're back with Peggy Noonan, who's got a new book out, The Time of Our Lives, a collection of her speeches and columns. So Peggy, when you went back into the warehouse where some of this was yeah. and looked through, is there a through line through all of this work that you see? Yeah, I gotta tell you, this is, I, I told your producer, Mary Hager, this is sort of 30 years uh, in the making um, of the putting together of the manuscript. A through line, I was surprised by the, how the preoccupations of 30 years ago and 20 years ago are indeed the preoccupations of today, not only mine, but America's. The greatness game, presidential politics, the importance of history, the people who move us, do you know what I mean? I sort of, the theme, it all comes down to America, I guess. The One of the people that uh, moved the country was Ronald Reagan, whom you worked for and uh, who you worked on speeches with. One interesting thing you, said, thing you said is that those who worked for Reagan knew him even when he wasn't in the room. When I've yeah. talked to other staffers for other presidents, they've said that is the presidential difference, is that good presidents, you can intuit what they want even if they haven't talked to you about it. Oh, that's so smart. Is that, tell us a little bit about that with Reagan. Um, someone who worked, a speechwriter for Jimmy Carter once told me, I'm jealous of you when I was a speechwriter for Reagan. I said, why? He said, you knew what Reagan thought, you knew why he thought it, you knew how he'd put it, you knew where he'd come out. He said, I, I gotta tell you, working for my president, Jimmy Carter, we never knew what he was gonna say or where he's gonna come out. If your philosophy is clear as president, your history is clear, your predilections and how you speak is clear, your speechwriters are just gonna be fine. They know you, they've studied you, they're with you. And that goes for other parts of the, the government as well, in terms yeah. of people trying to figure out a president's will. Yes, of course. Tell us about the speech you worked on with Ronald Reagan after the Challenger disaster, and that, and that notion of kind of that symbiotic relationship you had. Yeah, that, that's so interesting. I actually begin the book with that, with a lecture that I gave to some college students who were studying history. I said, you're gonna go into politics, let me tell you about a moment in politics. My goodness, it was uh, the day the Challenger blew up, we were not able to speak to the president, but we absolutely knew what he would think. And then somebody from the NSC who'd just spoken to him ran the notes of, uh, of what he wanted to say, essentially, uh, straight into us. And that was such a painful day. And, you know, it's 30 years ago, John. My goodness, time goes by. A painful day, but a deeply meaningful one. That was the, the flight Krista McAuliffe was on. And yeah. there was that poem at the end of the speech where mm -hmm. you had a sense that, or the line from the poem at the end of the speech, yeah. you had a sense he had read that poem too. You never talked to him about it. It though. was a little gamble. I thought of this poem I had learned in seventh grade at the public schools in Massapequa, Long Island. I thought this is the perfect ending for this speech, but we will never hear it if this is not a line from a poem that matters a lot to Ronald Reagan. And I watched it like everybody else. And indeed, he used that ending and called me afterwards the next day and said, how did you know I knew that poem? And I said, Mr. President, I did, and I took a chance. Let me ask you about the writing process. Um, has it changed over all this time, or do you still sit down with a keyboard the same way you did with a typewriter? Oh, for me personally, uh, I sit down uh, with a computer the way I did uh, with a typewriter. It's a lot of But does it come easier best. now? I mean, is it just the words I'm shocked to tell you it doesn't. The words have never flown for me. It has always seemed like work, but very satisfying and delightful work, but, but still work. But you know, you can't complain. You're trying to, to describe to people what you see and what is true. And then when you think you got it right, you think, all right. Oh, right. Mario. And when you got it wrong, of course, you go hide under your desk. And, and you listened to movie soundtracks while you're writing. Yeah, I do. To, to movie music. Yeah. Because it's just... Because other music would take me away from my work, but movie music is meant to help the story along. And what you're writing when you're writing a column or an essay, you're writing a story. Right. You're writing this happened and this happened and I think that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Peggy, we look forward to more stories from you, you and to having you at this table. Thanks Thank so you much. so much, John. Thanks, Very Peggy. much.